Today, we're gonna to begin a very important process of turning $1 million into $100 million. That's right, we're going to challenge myself to build a portfolio that grows over the coming years, and I'm expecting this maturity date to be somewhere around 2030. That's right, crypto folks are usually used to some pretty quick, almost instant gratification, but the biggest and most successful investors of all time have looked to the long term to build life life-changing amounts of wealth, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing here on the channel. Throughout this bear market, I'm going to take $1 million. I'm going to allocate it over the coming year and a half to two years. I'm going to do this publicly with you all, and I'm going to explain my strategy of how I plan to 100x or more this portfolio of assets. Now, in doing so, I want to be very clear. This is not an instant process. We're looking at the year 2030 to turn $1 million into $100 million. Now, some of you might say, well, that's too long of a time horizon. Who wants to wait seven years? But if you have a better way to make 100x on your portfolio, please go do that. While I believe that there are quicker ways to make money in crypto, the strategy I'm going to be using is one that is durable, long-term, and something that I believe in seven years is destined to be worth 100 times what it is today. So if you guys are excited for this particular video, which I think is one of the most important I will ever make, something that will help guide people through one of the toughest economic periods in history and hope hopefully out onto the other side where we will have years of growth and prosperity, then destroy that like button and subscribe because I'm going to be giving updates on the journey, updates on the portfolio for months and years to come until, of course, it reaches a place where I'm just letting the market do its thing. If you guys are excited for the sustainable and long-term path to 100x and life-changing wealth, then destroy that like button and let's get to it. Many people expect that we will start bottoming in the stock market soon and that the Fed will blink and start changing their policy of quantitative tightening. And this, of course, is after we've just heard that BlackRock, one of the biggest hedge fund and money managers in the world, has just lost the largest amount of money by a single firm over a six-month period in history. In the first half of the year, it lost $1.7 trillion of clients' money. And this is because they manage money on behalf of clients, $1.7 trillion and we haven't reached the bottom yet. And that's because as we're coming into earnings season, which we are hoping would show extremely bearish outlook on the way companies are earning money, what we're seeing is big tech is probably looking to dress up their balance sheets, looking to liquidate whatever they can and sort of pull out Hail Marys to make it look like things aren't as bad as they seem. Well, this is exactly what Tesla did by liquidating $922 million from Bitcoin that they bought during the bull run. Even though this was liquidated at a loss, this means that without cash from the Bitcoin sale Tesla would have been cash flow negative and it feels like the earnings were dressed up. This type of stuff keeps investors complacent. It keeps them slightly more confident than they should be with these kinds of smoke and mirrors on the balance sheet. Tesla wasn't making money from its core business. Instead, it sold Bitcoin from its cash reserves and made it seem like they were cash flow positive or slightly. And this, in my opinion, is a sign of many other things to come, where companies try to prolong and delay the inevitable reality that revenues are going down and that the country and economy at large are headed for a dramatic recession of historic proportions. Understanding that and understanding that the risk assets that will get most affected by this are things like the NASDAQ, tech stocks, and of course, cryptocurrency. If you understand that, you understand that these lows coming through the recession will probably also not be permanent and that once the tide turns, those assets will be the fastest horses to regain value and the most likely to achieve spectacular, huge valuations in the future. Once the climate of dollar devaluation and fiat currency devaluation accelerates into its ultimate form. To be very clear, regardless of what people feel about the Fed tightening the screws, right now the valuations of the market as Darius Dale says, with SPX at 4,000, does not incentivize the Fed to stop their policy anytime soon. The markets are not reacting as negatively as they need to for the Fed to stop their policy. As Wifey says here, exactly, short-term bullish is long-term bearish. Ironically, we want as much bad news as we can as quickly as we can so that something has to break and the Fed needs to pivot their stance. The reality is, is that we're not getting nearly enough bad news at once and companies are pulling out tricks to make things look like they're not as bad as they are. That's going to delay and prolong this quantitative tightening process, which means that risk assets will probably get battered and bruised for much longer than they would have if we had more bad news up front. 
Short-term bullish is actually long-term bearish. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel. The assets that I'm going to be going over today are going to be bucketed into different categories, but I'm going to be telling you how I plan to allocate to these assets over the coming months and years. And this long-term accumulation strategy in asset categories that I'm very, very confident and passionate about is going to be my way that I create the ultimate success story out of crypto over the next seven years. That's right. I'm looking beyond even the next cycle, knowing that there will probably be yet another bear market in the future of cryptocurrency. It is the nature of these markets. However, if you look two cycles out, I do believe it is possible to 100x your entire portfolio and beyond. And just to let you know, I plan to allocate multiple seven figures to this strategy, meaning that across my entire portfolio, if I achieve a 100x over the next seven years, I am confident that I will have earned over $100 million. And by holding a lot of these assets for over a year, I can actually take advantage of long-term capital gains meaning that the taxation on that gain will be significantly lower than if I was rapid trading. This is the beauty of accumulating during bear markets is you don't have the instant need to sell and you can take advantage of different tax structurings. Obviously, I don't know where you're watching this, but if you're in the United States, to me, accumulating through a bear market has a dual benefit of long-term tax benefits as well as getting dirt cheap prices on things that are fantastic innovations in the space. So fundamentally, I'm going to be going through four buckets of value. First, we have Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, Ethereum is actually part of two of these buckets. Ethereum is by all means a major cryptocurrency in the crypto space along with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is decentralized gold and becoming more and more significant by the day. We also have Metaverse Layer 1 protocols. As you know, I am convinced that we will be living and spending most of our time in the Metaverse by the time the clock strikes 2030. My positioning and strategy is all about the protocols and technologies that will enable that future. And those products, I believe, will appeal to mass audiences and onboard hundreds of millions, if not billions, of new users to the blockchain. So of course, with more users will come more value, and I do believe, to the core of my being, that Metaverse Layer 1 protocols will benefit tremendously. However, they will not benefit quite as much as metaverse applications. You see applications, take for instance, Fortnite. If Fortnite had their own digital currency and they were actually living on the blockchain and their assets were on the blockchain, I believe that that currency would be home to potentially the most users of any chain. Maybe chains like Meta or Facebook would have, or maybe Google's chain with a ton of products and services for the Android devices. These types of application-based chains, to me, could be the biggest wins of all because of the amount of users they would service. However, just like any application, if it's not a platform, but a specific application, then the reality is that the risk of it failing is significantly higher. Therefore, these are the highest risk reward. But in my opinion, these gains can be in excess of 1000x. So this bucket will be one that you'll want to spread your bets out and have lots of opportunities for success in knowing for sure that many of them will fail. But that one success within this particular category could make your entire portfolio worth tens of millions, if not more. That, of course, depends on how much capital you allocate. Finally, I'll be looking at DeFi. You see, DeFi has gotten a really bad reputation lately because of centralized lenders like Celsius, hedge funds like Three Arrows Capital, and of course, the collapse of DeFi 2.0 fixed rate yield products like Luna and UST. Well, guess what? DeFi 1.0 is a tremendous innovation, and the protocols that I'll be discussing, I believe, still have a huge and bright future. And I believe it'll be pretty clear that as the regulators tighten the noose on DeFi in the wake of these titanic failures out of DeFi 2.0, that these protocols will become wildly undervalued in comparison to the true utility that they serve long term. So let's dive in. Right now, Bitcoin is sitting at about $23,000. I do see it bottoming here in the low teens ultimately throughout this bear market. Could go a little bit lower. It could also not reach that low of a price. But the reality is that I see Bitcoin eventually reaching a million dollars. Now, it might take 10 years to get there. It might take 15 years to get there. But I do believe that by 2030, we'll probably see a Bitcoin that it's not too hard to fathom it getting to a million dollars, whether that means it's in the hundreds of thousands or closer to that million dollars or even above. The reality is that I do see Bitcoin as a well into the six-figure coin by the time the clock strikes 2030. So seeing this make a 10x or really 
a 20 to 50x is something that I see as totally possible. In reality, Bitcoin is always going to be considered the safest cryptocurrency. It's the most decentralized, it's the most adopted, and it's the one where all new money flocks into when it flows into the ecosystem. Accumulating Bitcoin during crushing bear markets has never, ever been a bad strategy in the history of its life. And given the macroeconomic conditions, I think we're going to start seeing some absolute steals of entry prices into Bitcoin land. Next, we have Ethereum, which is flirting with its prior all-time high of $1,440. In fact, it actually went under $1,000 briefly just over the last month or so. I see Ethereum going under $1,000 during this bear market, a price under which I see as an absolute bargain because I do see Ethereum as even more disruptive than Bitcoin coming into its Ethereum 2.0 proof of stake merge and all of the amazing upgrades to the protocol that will be taking place in the coming years. It's the home of new developers, of new ideas, of innovation in the crypto space. Ethereum is a behemoth, and I believe that allocating to Ethereum will probably be one of the highest combinations of high return and lower risk profile in the crypto space. You see, next to Bitcoin, there's only one coin that can be argued to be lower risk, and that is Ethereum. Though there are still so many doubters about Ethereum's ability to fend off would-be challengers in the future. I'm an Ethereum, and I'm a believer. And I do believe that Ethereum is headed for 50x or greater greater gains. It wouldn't surprise me to see Ethereum reach 100k per coin in the distant future. And certainly I believe that Ethereum will be valued at 50k or above by the time we hit 2030. So I'll be allocating to Ethereum long term, just like Bitcoin, expecting that over the coming years, these innovations will continue to grow as the dollar devalues. Next, let's talk about alternative layer ones that are focusing on metaverse. You see, I believe in the metaverse more than probably most people. But because of that, I'm gonna support my conviction by investing in the layer one protocols that support ecosystems for the metaverse. And so far, besides Ethereum, which is the number one metaverse protocol so far, there are two other chains that I believe have identified themselves as hotbeds for innovation in the gaming and metaverse space within crypto. And those are Polygon and Solana. The reality is that both of these ecosystems are extremely vibrant, with Polygon being the easiest for Ethereum developers to port to, the easiest Ethereum companion chain, and in my opinion, has already proven itself in its ability to appeal to developers of all walks, from the highest tier mainstream web to tech companies, to new games and new NFT projects that have erupted from grassroots movements. The reality is that Polygon is a behemoth. We also have Solana, which has shown that it has created an entirely new community. Solana doesn't use the same framework as Ethereum, but it has an amazing amount of developers and excitement around its community. Regardless of what you think about these chains, I believe that allocating to Ethereum, Polygon, and Solana gives someone a very significant exposure to the metaverse layer one space and to the metaverse as a whole by extension. In my opinion, these are three chains that I believe will thrive with the growth of the metaverse industry. Of course, more could emerge in the future, but over time, these, I believe, will be proven to be very sound investments in the long term. Of course, this is more risky than Ethereum and far more risky than Bitcoin. But you need to understand that. And the way to approach that type of risk is to make your position size on these types of assets much smaller than you would your Bitcoin or Ethereum position. That's how approaching risk is done in crypto. You manage the amount of money and exposure you have in these more risky assets, knowing that they can grow dramatically more than the bigger assets, but they're also more likely to fall than those other assets and have dramatic losses. By having position sizing that is smaller, and by dollar cost averaging into these assets, you can actively curb against some of the biggest risks in price fluctuation and asset market changes that happen here in crypto. Next, let's talk about DeFi before jumping back into application-specific chains. DeFi is not going anywhere, despite what regulators, news articles, and many salacious commentators out there in the world would want you to believe. You see many DeFi protocols like Aave, like Compound, like Curve. These DeFi 1.0 primitives don't promise you overnight wealth or excessive gains, excessive fixed rate yield. You see, anything that promises you a fixed rate of return is not viable in the long term because there's no way to guarantee those returns over time. However, Many of these DeFi 1.0 protocols provide what's called money Legos and DeFi primitives. These are decentralized, immutable, and very important utilities on the blockchain. And in my opinion, they ain't going nowhere. 
However, over the coming months, we will see most likely some significant drops in these DeFi 1.0 protocols because the regulators, the news articles, everything will make it seem like what happened with Celsius, what happened with Three Arrows, what happened with Luna applies to all DeFi protocols and effectively DeFi is dead. That is going to be a huge opportunity to buy into protocols that are truly innovative, that truly serve to advance the financial world and are probably going to become dramatically undervalued throughout the bear market. Allocating to DeFi 1.0 protocols, I believe, is a very strong strategy to include in your bag of tricks during this bear market. Certainly with a return to strength, I could see DeFi 1.0 from the bottom of the bear market to the health of the next bull market, making at least 50x gains. And that's going to be because there's going to be dramatic sell-offs throughout the coming months as DeFi becomes the target of much regulatory ire. I'll add in Convex Finance as well as it's like a sister protocol to Curve. And what can I say? All the big brains I know love Convex too. It's been very good to me. And it's still almost 3x up in US dollar terms from when we first started covering it back at the beginning of its life. Now, finally, let's talk about application-specific chains. And the one that I'm going to bring up first is ApeCoin. You see, the Ape community that was born out of the Board Ape Yacht Club is one of the biggest and most vibrant crossover communities that has appealed to mainstream audiences. They were able to make so much money that they were able to acquire a ton of tech and build world-class partnerships with projects like Improbable, which have been working on metaverse-like persistent world technology for almost a decade. The reality is that projects like ApeCoin will eventually move to their own own chains. And when they do, those chains will be home to tens of thousands of users immediately, users that care passionately about the product, and it will most likely be a hotbed for other innovators to build on top of, as well as for tons of users to adopt. These types of new chains have the potential to skyrocket, much like any popular application would. The reality is, is that ApeCoin is just one example because there will be many other major applications that build their own blockchains in the coming years. And those, I believe, specifically the ones around metaverse and gaming, will be some of the biggest opportunities in the space. It's important that you understand that if these launch during the bull market, like ApeCoin did, they're going to get wild valuations right off the bat. And those valuations probably aren't the best prices to buy into. What you want to do is wait for these slow bear market times, whether that's throughout this bear market cycle or potentially the next bear market cycle. Investing in the off season is the way that you can actually slowly and methodically build positions in application specific chains. The reality is, is that I also have my own project in the space, Superfarm. Within the Superfarm ecosystem, System, there is a game Imposters, as well as a marketplace tech coming out, which has not yet been named publicly. But eventually, the Super Farm project, with enough users and utility, specifically from the games and the metaverse projects, will move to its own chain as well. Now, of course, I want to be very clear. I'm not telling you to buy Super Farm. I can't do that. In fact, there's a lot of rules about what I can and can't say. So I'm not saying that you should allocate to this. There's tremendous risk in all of these metaverse protocols. But that's where I spend the majority of my time focusing and working. It's about innovating within this space and creating value within the projects within the Super Farm ecosystem. And certainly success within that ecosystem holds significantly more incentive than anything I've talked about with just allocating my assets in the open market. The reality is, is that that's where my passion, my purpose, and most of my excitement are funneled into. But we are just one of many dozens, hundreds of projects that will be innovating within this space. Finding the good projects, allocating to them, and waiting until the world moves into the metaverse, in my opinion, is one of the biggest opportunities in the history of our society, in the history of the internet. There will be many losers. In fact, probably over a 90% fail rate. So just know, finding strong projects with communities that last through bear markets, allocating strategically over long periods of time, following the data, and not marrying your bags are key skill sets to benefiting from this application-specific trend. So there you have it, my own path to 100X. I'm gonna be allocating $1 million of my portfolio to this strategy, and we're gonna follow along. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. It's really important that you understand this is not me telling anyone what to invest. This is me sharing my own strategy in a way that I feel like can be followed in a slow and steady way. The bull run moves way too fast to have these long drawn out strategies. And so I believe that there's no better time than the present to be making long-term plans, allocating slowly to a vision of the future that I believe is inevitable. And in doing so, I plan to more than 100X my portfolio. Of course, I could be wrong. I could take a massive L. I could lose every single penny of this million dollars. The world is very uncertain here in crypto land. 
But my gut tells me that we're headed into the metaverse and the protocols that power cryptocurrency, decentralized wealth, and metaverse technologies are gonna be some of the most important on the emerging new internet. If you got some value out of this, smash that like button. And remember, this is just my opinion, not financial advice. I sincerely encourage you to do your own research. Use this as a starting place, but make sure you subscribe with that bell notification on so you can get all of my updates throughout this process, which is gonna take us far, far into the future. I look forward to the journey with you all. With that said, I'm Elio Trades. You can find me on Twitter at Elio Trades. If you're looking for the best exchange in the business, make sure you sign up with my link for FTX. The link is in the description below and you can get an amazing discount. It's by far the best exchange in the business. And for using the strategies that I'm using, dollar cost averaging over time, it's such a simple and easy way to do it on FTX. They have a dollar cost average feature so you can set it and truly forget it. As always, I'm Elio Trades and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.